So um, the mobile mm. money opportunity obviously comes from those numbers. Yeah, still in this world, we have two billion people who do not have access to banking, while most of them have access to mobile phones. Uh, the wider the gap between the two, the bigger the opportunity for telcos is. Tele telecom companies like Vodafone, right, we have those customers because uh, they have the mobile phone and then they have the, the secure element, the SIM, in there. And we have the distribution network in place so we can leverage those assets that are already there to serve the telco business to provide basic financial services. How does M-Pesa work? Uh, well, we don't have to go into detail, but the idea behind M-Pesa, it's a very simple technology. It's based on SMS, so um, any simple phone, you don't need a smartphone. Um, agents are there in place, uh, little shops in villages that are there to register customers. They're also there as cash-in and cash-out points. Customer sends money via phone using SMS and has to put in a PIN code for security purposes. Key <coughs> principles of the model, because you know, when M-Pesa was launched in Kenya se uh, well, seven years ago, uh, we understood that um, the people um, that we're gonna be targeting are those that will have simple phones, and um, w we, we knew that um, they, they will never go into a bank, so we knew that it has to be affordable, simple, and the distribution has to be everywhere. Now, M-Pesa is not only <coughs> a Kenya story. It's uh, probably the most famous uh, case that people uh, hear about. Uh, I work in the central team in London, here where our main task is rolling out M-Pesa to new markets. Um, in the past 12 months, we launched six more markets. So you will see India, Egypt, DRC, big ones, then Mozam Mozambique, Lesotho, um, and then we also, just a few weeks ago, launched our first European market, which will be an interesting test, uh, bringing African innovation to Europe <laughs> for similar needs. Yeah. Uh, Romania is a dual economy where about half of the population has access to banking and the other half doesn't. So it's also an interesting test for the model. Uh, we're not the only ones. Mobile money industry is booming. Other telcos understood that there is a big opportunity there, and there are currently uh, over 200 live deployments. This is GSMA data. Uh, however, not all of them are a success. Uh, very few uh, reached over uh, 1 million customers. It's not an easy business. It's a low-margin business, and it requires a lot of investment in the first three years. You know, business model is really about volume, not about margins because um, we want to reach the bottom of the pyramid. They are our most loyal customers. So, you know, not every company is ready now to keep on investing for three years in order to, you know, three, four years until they break even, so. IMT, so uh, the international money transfer, uh, we understand it's very important for our customers. Uh, most of our markets are net remittance receivers. We, it's, a, it's a good, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a source of revenue. And MTOs also, they like to partner with us. So we are in essence um, started by first partnering with big guys like Western Union and MoneyGram and as, as serving as their cash out network. Well, mm -hmm. not exactly, but more like partnerships where people would receive remittances into their wallet. So there was a benefit for the customer because it's more convenient. They re they they get the money right into their wallet. They don't need to travel and, and pick, it up, uh, pick it up at another location. And for Western Union, obviously, it's a wider reach within the country uh, further. Um, however, we, after working with Western Union, we understood that there are all these other um, players on the sending channel which, who are <coughs> disrupting the space. So. The, the new thing is, is obviously technology uh, disrupted the sending end as well, uh, internet in the first place. So now there are various uh, money transfer operators which are simply online based. They don't have any retail network which significantly lowers their cost of operation so they're able to allow um, a lower uh, prices to customers. So examples of those would be, I don't know, World Remit, they are, w they are now sending 
uh, from UK to um, directly to M-Pesa Kenya. And um, th I, I must say that they um, introduced um, an, a nice competition there where we saw like last December, we saw uh, Western Union made a specific promotion for sending money from UK to Kenya, which was like free of charge 20 days before Christmas. I think this was in response to, you know, few, um, few other players gaining market share. So M-Pesa is a receiving channel for innovative sending models is a, is a powerful proposition and we think it, it intensifies the competition. Um, and number two is an, a second opportunity how to disrupt this market via M-Pesa is to start using M-Pesa as a sending channel and we're looking into that now that we are in so many countries and obviously Kenya and Tanzania are the more mature markets we're going to try and attempt to get a, um, get a license and, and, and send remittances between those two directly from phone to phone. Oh, and in this case, we actually, this is the first time where we could gain control, meaning price control. As a receiver, mm -hmm. we don't dictate the price. We just uh, make it more convenient for the user. Um, we are not the only ones. There are other models. I don't know if you heard there was a, so Tigo is our competitor, um, telecom company who also has Tigo money. Uh, so I think they also launched something, um, Airtel. So, so the competition is intensifying. We are um, facing similar obstacles to many of those mentioned today, regularly <coughs> being uh, num regulatory challenges being number one. We, uh, when we launch in PESA, we always uh, go and get the direct uh, e-money license, so we're directly regulated by the central bank. That license that not, does not include international money transfer. For that, we have to obtain an additional license. Uh, so it's, it's difficult, it's lengthy, um, for even, even for just uh, being a receiver. Being a sender, uh, obviously, we face even more um, of constraints. Uh, bank ch hidden bank charges would be another thing that makes all those innovative um, <laughs> corridors um, much more uh, commer difficult to re to have to be com commercially feasible. Yeah. Those would be the main main ones. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.